finally shining. We had two back-to-back -back days of basically like a snow blizzard. You didn't want to leave your bed, your room, your house. It was just stay inside type of weather. Now the sun has finally come out. It's honestly still cold. It's like in the 40s, but I think that there's no wind or at least like there's less wind, which the wind really helps. If you're stepping out, it's like 30 degrees, but that wind is like just at a one mile per hour. It's basically 70. We're finally going book shopping. We're finally going to bookstores. I haven't been book shopping for myself in a while, but like in a while in context of like other bookish people. When people make book content, they normally go to the bookstore like every month, which like makes sense. If you've been on my channel for a while, I keep saying that it takes me a while to finish a book. Normally it takes me like one month to finish one book. I'm lucky if I get two in there, unless it's like a series that I'm really breezing through and I'm addicted to. Like Fourth Wing, I finished in 48 hours, I believe, which was insanity and that's why i needed to rate that book five stars because i was like i don't know how you just got me to become a speed reader i've never finished a book in 48 hours and that was like 300 plus pages so that was insane but on a regular basis it takes me a good while to finish a book especially when i like in school season and stuff like that because i just don't have time to completely binge it i don't necessarily like going to the bookstore a bunch of times because sometimes my physical tbr is literally Full. Like my physical TBR is stacked up. There's stuff I really need to get to on there. It makes me a little bit more anxious buying a bunch of new books when I know that my physical TBR is so extensive. In my mind, I need to at least read like three of the books off of my physical TBR before I could go add more onto it. Because then I'm just like, am I ever gonna get to those? I've been like going into bookstores and like reading blurbs, but then just not purchasing, which honestly is kind of fun. It's like window shopping for books. The last time I purchased books, I believe it was in November and I went to a McNally Jackson and I got a bunch of nonfiction books. This time we're doing fiction. Maybe I'll get one more nonfiction, but like I already have four nonfictions. So it's like I don't need another nonfiction, but I also kind of want another nonfiction. My goal is to get four books, which is a lot. Like these books be like, sometimes I wish books were five dollars, but also the desire in me to be an author is like, no, like I don't wish books were four dollars because then when I become an author, how am I going to eat? So it's like, understandable we'll just see i have books in mind that i know that i want i haven't been to the bookstore in a while so like i'm gonna give myself a little bit of leniency but i know for a fact i need to buy powerless by lauren roberts because i know there's like a ro there's different powerlesses i need to buy the physical copy because i read her on my kindle i annotated her on my kindle so i need the physical copies so that i can transfer the annotations i do want to purchase at least the first two books of the hunger games is my thought that's like the next book that i'm gonna be reading and like i have been unable to start a book on my physical tbr because i'm like no you're about to start the hunger games but i just haven't had the chance to go out and buy it it's kind of like what i'm going into this journey knowing that I want to get. The first bookstore I'm going to go to is in Tribeca. It's a Tribeca Barnes and Nobles. Apparently they're like closing down. So they have, they were having like a huge sale where books were like 50% off, 40% off. I think everything was like 40% off. And I'm a little late. So I'm just going to go check it out. But based on the TikToks I'm seeing, I feel like they probably have run out of, you know, the really popular fiction books. They probably are not going to have Powerless because I'm pretty sure that was like probably like one of the first things to go in the romance C section. I want to go to The Strand. It's like a popular bookstore. I've never been inside of it. I've always heard people talk about it. It's supposed to be like, you know, one of the cool New York-esque bookstores. I pretty much packed my tote. There's really not much in it because I don't need to bring my Kindle because I don't have a current Kindle read going on. But I do have my journal because I'm probably gonna go to a cafe. I also have my nonfiction book that I'm currently gonna start. I have been reading, this has been my current nonfiction book. I, with like the nonfiction books and like the history books, I like to like switch between a bunch of them because I normally read them like in the morning. I try to read for like 30 minutes out of the nonfiction books. I'm like, girl, it's not a romance scene. It's real hard for me to like sit down and binge nonfiction. It's still stuff that I want to read, but I just have to put more of an initiative to read it. So I have been reading Angela Davis, Freedom is a Constant Struggle. I need a little break from this, 
because I feel like this book is, is good, but it's like a compilation of essays and like interviews and speeches that Angela Davis has made. And Angela Davis is an activist. It's a little bit repetitive, kind of like, of course, repeats herself. And it's a little bit hard to read back to back every day because it's kind of, he's feeling like the same thing. So I want to take a little bit of a break from this and start this this one because this one's a little bit thicker i've been wanting to start this one so this will be my new nonfiction that i'm starting this is the fit i stepped outside and it's like not too cold with all of my layers so i could get away with wearing this leather jacket okay i'm about to say something and it's like really stupid but it's like hear me out i feel like the leather jacket gives she's going to a bookstore it's giving she's going to pick up some books whereas i was gonna wear my north face puffer jacket but i'm like the north face puffer jacket just doesn't give the same aesthetic as the bookstore you know what i mean i got on my cornell sweater the jacket is from motel rocks i have on my nakd jeans and then my uggs we need to head out because the bookstore opened 30 minutes ago and i'm like I feel like there's gonna be a line. I'm really hoping there's not since it's a Monday, but let's cross our fingers because if there's a like super long line, I'm just, I don't think I'm gonna wait in it. Especially if I feel like they're not gonna have everything that I really want. discount Barnes was pretty interesting because I didn't realize that every single item in the store was going to be 40 to 50 percent off vinyls bookmarks kids toys magazines every single thing not just books was on sale which was really cool but I got there a few weeks late so honestly I didn't see anything that I was super interested in and I just kind of got overwhelmed I did see this Joey Graceffa book like 2012 YouTube Joey Graceffa apparently he's an author and is writing sci-fi fantasy did we all know or was this like a secret that I just didn't know about I did see the Hunger Games but at this point the line was pretty long and I just decided to head out. Strand. I got some sustenance because honestly book shopping on an empty stomach sounds criminal so I got some chai and I got a sandwich. Okay the train's gonna come. The train's gonna come right when I want to speak to you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Strand. I have literally had people telling me about this bookstore my entire life, but I've never stepped foot in here, but I can tell why it's so iconic. Firstly, I believe it's like a historical landmark. Like it's been here for hundreds of years, but don't quote me on that. But immediately you walk in and you just feel the vibes. It feels kind of like a gift shop, but for books. It has a bunch of merchandise. The vibe of it is just very cozy. They also had an entire section dedicated to signed books, which was really, really cool. next Christmas I will be directing anybody I know here for any bookish gift ideas they want to get me because they had the coolest vintage Marvel comic book section and then this mug literally leave me alone my favorite fictional character just died that is the epitome of my soul and I wish I bought it but I was trying to be responsible with my money but now I'm kind of regretting that they also had the biggest tote bag section with really really cute different tote bags <laughs> Overall, it had that like really cute indie bookstore vintage feel and I went upstairs to the YA section. Honestly, I didn't realize that I guess it's like a mix of a discount bookstore and a regular bookstore because the section that I was in had half off books right next to full price books. So I guess you can kind of donate and you can get some thrifted and used books here, which was really cool. Honestly, they were really great quality. I normally, it's hard for me to buy thrifted books because I am a perfectionist and I'm really particular 
particular about how books on my shelves look but these thrifted and used books looks really good so i would definitely be coming back to get some specific used books Why did nobody tell me that Twilight was a YA book? I did not think that Twilight was a YA book. I thought this was adult, but I'm like, it's in the YA section, so like, kind of confused. Like this? This is YA? The movie was not giving YA, so I'm like confused if this is YA. Also, I think because they do like donations, they have like different covers. This is the old original covers of the Mortal Instruments series, the ones that I had in like middle school. Like I have all of these, but like these are the new ones that they sell. So like they have kind of like a mixed bag. Also, I've literally never seen this cover of The Hunger Games in my life. Like I've never seen this online or anything. And like I want it, but I like would need a whole set of the covers that look like this and i don't know where to get this like i don't know what version this is but it's only like 850 which is really good But if I convince you to come to the Strand for one thing, please let it be this blind date with a book section because this is the cutest thing. The drawings on this, the art designs that people did were actually really intense. So this is definitely like a fun place to come if you're just looking for like a cool vibe, cool gifts. I finished with Strand, but I didn't realize that Strand was like right in Union Square. So I was right down the block from the Union Square Barnes & Nobles, which is like the biggest Barnes & Nobles technically in the country, I think. I don't know, but I didn't necessarily get everything that I wanted from Strand. So I'm gonna check in here and see if I can get what I want. I'm gonna try to not get run over. That's always my goal. I kind of get into this bad habit of when I pick up a book, I always want to go on my phone and check the Goodreads reviews of it before buying it, which I don't know, that might be a good habit, but sometimes I feel like it hinders me because honestly, like I've read so many books that people rate highly and I rate pretty low, so I feel like I shouldn't base whether or not I buy a book on the Goodreads comment section. I don't know, sometimes I'm just like afraid to go full force and just buy a book without hearing other people's opinions on it. So I do also like to check TikTok and TikTok edits to see like if the TikTok edits match the vibe that I'm looking for but I don't know I need to get out of my like Goodreads habit And then I ended up with this quite large stack of books and I was like, okay, I need to narrow this down because I remembered I already got books from The Strand. So I kind of just sat here for like a good hour and started reading the first chapter or if the first chapter was too long, I would just read the first five pages of each book. And honestly, if it didn't hook me within the first five pages, I just decided to put it to the side. It doesn't necessarily mean that I won't ever read the book because I picked up some ones that I was really interested in, like The Naturals, I still really want to read. But I think for right now, I only want to be getting books that I'm hooked immediately within the first five pages. That's what I was doing, kind of trying to narrow down my choices.
I'm literally so groggy that I want to pass out. So I've gotten out my ice roller. Cause I'm like, if anything's gonna wake me up, hopefully it's this. It's been a while since I spoke to you guys. I went book shopping on Monday and it's currently Saturday. So it's been a little while. I kind of had to wait a little bit because I was waiting for a package to come in. Just want to start off by saying I didn't get Powerless. Okay, I didn't pick up Powerless because every time I saw Powerless in the bookstore, it was a hardcover. I am very adamant that like if I cannot buy a hardcover and I could get a paperback somewhere else, I would much rather just like wait or do something else where I could get the paperback because uh, it's just something about hardcovers that just doesn't satisfy me the same way feeling a paperback back does every time i went into a bookstore they had only the powerless hardcover and then i checked online and i found the powerless paperbacks so i just decided that whenever i'm ready to annotate that book i'm going to buy the paperback version but it's like really not pressing because it wasn't even fi a five star read for me so it's like it's not like it was like a die hard book it's just like i do want to transfer my annotations onto a physical book but I'll do that at some point. It just wasn't happening this time. Also, while going through all these stores, I was knowing that regardless I wanted to get The Hunger Games, at least the first two books, possibly the whole series if I saw it. But then every time I kept coming across a book, it just felt like very expensive. And then I went online and I realized that they had it half off at like Target and Amazon. It was like a really good deal and none of the in-person bookstores were having a good deal like that. So I was like, I might as well just order these. And they ended up taking a little while to come but here they are I ended up just getting the full series because I know I want to be reading the full series I know this is something that I'm gonna finish regardless like I'm really hope that I'm saying that and I'm not like sitting here about to DNF at freaking catching fire but I feel like because I love the movie so much that I'm like I really hope that means that I really enjoy the books and that I actually like get through this entire series if you're ever in New York the Strand is a great place to go if you have any like bookish people in your life, people that like book type things. It's a great place to go get merch. They have the cutest mugs, sweatshirts, and then tote bags, okay? They have the cutest freaking tote bags, a whole section for them. And I was going into it knowing that I wanted a tote bag because I saw on TikTok that they have really cute tote bags. So this is the tote bag that I got. It just says The Strand, 18 miles of books. It's like this green theme and then on the back of it it has all of this like nature stuff and then what i didn't even realize when i purchased i don't know if this is all of them just the one that i got but it has a built-in book sleeve so if you look right there there's the velcro and then here's a little sleeve where i could put like my book you're like a tote bag wearer okay and you just like throw everything in your tote and then you just have your regular regular like paperback for some reason the stuff in the tote just beats up the bag and then sometimes it's like for some reason the paper gets stained i'm like how is my tote bag this dirty i don't even understand it's good to get like a book sleeve if you're really adamant on wanting to keep your books clean but this one has it built in anyways that's not what you came to see the one book that i got that actually was discounted but not by half it was like the listing price is 15.99 and then i got it for 12.99 so i saved like what three dollars flat i got dark rise by cs packets is on if you watched my new year's prep video this is on my 12 books that i want to read in 2024 bigger because i saw it and it was just like a little bit discounted i was like why not get it and I'm also just like really, really excited to read this story that like I need it on my shelf. That way like I could at least have a few books from the 12 books I want to read just like ready on my shelf to go if I want to jump into them. Very excited. I've also have not read many books from a male character perspective. I think the only one that I've read is like Maze Runner. You know what I'm saying? Like I normally, I've just been reading like female teenage main characters. So I'm excited to like switch it up a little bit. The cutest thing. I got a blind date with a book. I think this is so great. Again, a great place to go get gifts for people that are into books because you could just pick them up a blind date for, with a book. And honestly, the one that I picked up, it looks really pretty, but this wasn't even the craziest art design. Like they had some really insane drawings but the ones with the really cool drawings i just wasn't really too excited about the like premise of it this one is a bridgerton-esque regency era romance and if you remember from my last video i believe i just got done watching the buccaneers so i'm kind of like in my regency era vibe so i have to open this i'm a little bit scared but we're gonna open it together i have no clue i'm not gonna keep the paper so i don't know why i'm like 
trying to be gentle. I'm scared. I'm scared. Is it paperback? I'm gonna let you guys look at it first. Okay, what is it? What is this? <laughs> to Love and To Loathe by Martha Waters. The widow Diana, Lady Templeton, and Jeremy Marquess of Willingham are infamous among English high society as much for their sharp tongued bickering as their flirtation. One evening, an argument at a ball turns into a serious wager. Jeremy will marry within the year, or Diana will forfeit 100 pounds. So shortly after, just before a fortnight long house party at Elder... There's a lot. Diana is shocked when Jeremy appears at her home with a different kind of proposition. I'm so confused. After his latest mistress unfavorably criticized skills in the bedroom. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. Jeremy suggests that they embark on a brief affair while at the house party. Jeremy can receive an honest critique and Diana can use the gossip to signal to other gentlemen that she is interested in taking a lover. Diana believes the proposal could only help her win her wager. And so with marriage on the mind, she heads to Elderwild. But while Diana and Jeremy are busy making bets, they stand to lose their own hearts. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. We're gonna give it a try. If I'm in the mood, then I'll be in the mood. Jeremy will marry within the year or Diana will forfeit 100. I'm confused, but it's okay. We love the strand. We will be returning. I went to the massive of all massives and we went a little bit insane. Let's begin with the book that I already started for the week while waiting to show you guys this haul and I'm almost halfway through. This is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. This one has been highly talked about. It's won a lot of awards. Number one New York Times bestseller. I was originally intrigued by it because I saw this TikTok and this girl was like, I wanna be a baker and a pop star and like own a cafe and own a bookstore. Like I just wanna be so many different things in life, but it's like, oh, I can only pick one. It went viral. And then there were so many other people like commenting that were like, no, I agree. Like there's so many things that I wanna be. And it's just like, I don't know how to be all of them. And then people in the comments were like, oh, this is what Sylvia Plath was talking about. I don't I'm like Sylvia Plath what was Sylvia Plath talking about and then apparently Sylvia Plath has like an analogy for this feeling called the fig tree figs on the tree let me not let me not butcher Sylvia Plath's little analogy it was a quote from the bell jar I saw my life branching out before me like the green fig tree in the story from the tip of every branch like a fat purple fig a wonderful future beckoned and winked one fig was a husband and a happy home and children and another fig was a famous poet and another fig was a brilliant professor and another fig was eg the amazing editor and another fig was europe and africa and south america and another fig was constantine and socrates and attila and a pack of other lovers with queer names and offbeat professions and another fig was an olympic lady crew champion and and beyond and above these figs were many more figs I couldn't quite make out. I saw myself sitting in the crotch of this fig tree, starving to death, just because I couldn't make up my mind which of the figs I would choose. I wanted each and every one of them, but choosing one meant losing all the rest. And as I sat there, unable to decide, the figs began to wrinkle and go black, and one by one they plopped to the ground at my feet. The girls in the comments were saying, oh, y'all need to read the Midlight Library because that's literally describing that whole feeling and that whole concept. Because the premise of the Midnight Library is basically this woman named Nora. She dies. She goes to this place called the Midnight, Midnight Library, which isn't life nor death. It's like this in between of life and death. And it's this huge library where it has a bunch of books filled with all of the different paths that her life could go on based on different choices that she could have made throughout life. Billions upon billions of books that are just different variants of her life. And she kind of has to go and like see the different lives that she could have lived based on different choices. So it's basically like the fig tree thing, except she gets to see what the other lives actually look like. It's good. Almost halfway through, I'm not like fully halfway through yet, but so far I'm really enjoying it. I'm really excited to see how it ends because I know 
hopefully it's gonna be like a really impactful message and so far it's like making me think a lot about like regret and how daunting of a feeling regret can be it's my first ever literary fiction it's keeping me propelled barnes was doing their little ya fantasy thing where they had a buy one get one first one i got was we hunt the flame by hafsa faisal zafir is the hunter disguising herself as a man when she braves the cursed forest of the ars to feed her people nazir is the prince of death assassinating those foolish enough to defy his autocratic father the sultan if zafira is exposed as a girl all of her achievements will be rejected if nazir displays his compassion his father will punish him in the most brutal of ways both zafira and nazir are legends in the kingdom of arawaya Arawia, but neither wants to be. But an ancient evil stirs as their journey unfolds, and the prize they seek may pose a threat greater than either can imagine. I think I'm gonna get a little bit of romance in here, which is exciting. Also, this is so gorgeous. I love the side of this. So that was one part of my buy one, get one. I had to take a quick break and move locations, so don't mind that. I left off. I'm about to tell you guys about Furyborn, which is the other buy one get one 50% off book that I got. I really love when Barnes does the little buy one get one 50. I heard that this is like very morally gray character ask and I live for a good morally gray character. Like please do not give me a character that is just a saint or has really really great unbreakable morals or is just like completely terrible. Like I love like mmm kind of did a bad thing but I'm still kind of rooting for them because like I you know it follows two different women in like different timelines so it's like two young women centuries apart hold the power to either save the world or doom it okay when assassins ambush her best friend riel darden risks everything to save him exposing herself as one of a pair of prophesized queens a queen of light and a queen of blood to prove she is the sun queen riel must endure seven elemental magical trials of elemental magic. If she fails, she will be executed unless the trials kill her first. And then, 1,000 years later, the legend of Queen Riel is a fairy tale to Eliana Ferracora, a bounty hunter for the Undying Empire. Eliana believes herself untouchable until her mother vanishes. To find her, Eliana joins a rebel captain and discovers that the evil at the Empire's heart is more terrible than she ever imagined. Oh, love this. Next one I got is Aurora Rising. This cover, guys, eats. I don't know about you, but comment down below what type of cover person are you? Are the type of are you the type of person that just likes kind of like simple art designs like this on your covers? Are you the type of person that likes to see character art on your covers? Like what's your vibe? Kind of like a space vibe this one the writing style within the first few pages i could tell was very like unserious like i don't i don't want to classify an entire book series as like unserious but like the writing just felt very unserious which i enjoy because oftentimes our high fantasy and our fantasy books are just very intense and i love the intensity that's why i love fantasy but like i don't know i feel like this one is gonna be like a good time and that was basically it for the fiction and then there was two non-fictions i was interested in there was one nonfiction. It's called Your Brain on Birth Control. And I saw this girl talking about it on TikTok and it seemed really interesting. And I was like really intrigued by it. So I was going to get that, but then they ran out of the last copy. So I was like, okay, it just wasn't meant to be like, I won't get that one. And instead I got one of the nonfictions that is on my 12 books within 2024 list. This is Cobalt Red, How the Blood of the Congo Powers Our Lives by Siddharth Kara. I've been really, really anticipating reading this one just because I've been really anticipating learning about the Congo. This was so expensive. I guess because it's hardcover. That's the other thing. But I guess I under... I guess that's capitalism. Because I'm like, I truly like... I don't know if you guys like hardcovers. I dislike hardcovers because I'm like, A... I always am afraid of getting a paper cut on the book sleeve and then B it's like when the actual book is just so plain and basic I'm like what what is the point you know wondering if hardcovers are cheaper to make but if they sell them to be more expensive like I wonder which one like cost more to make because normally like when there's a new release of a book because this book like just it, it hasn't been out for a super long time so the paperback isn't out yet so normally what they do when they have like a new release of a book is they'll only release it in hardcover 
And I'm like, maybe that's because hardcovers are listed as more expensive. So they want to make sure that they get as much. Yeah, that probably does make sense. Because realistically, like, you make more profit by only allowing people that want the book right away to buy the more expensive hardcover. Because if the book was released right away and I had the option of both softcover and hard hardcover, and paperback is always less expensive, I would just always pick paperback. So, I don't know. Capitalism? Scary. Capitalism? Don't like it. And then the final book is just really interesting. It's just really interesting. I got this. This is a special edition version of Pride and Prejudice, okay? And you're like, what? But Barnes & Nobles has this section where they have like special edition versions of all of the classics and it just looks so gorgeous. Listen, man, I like reading the books but i also know that i am a book collector like people talk about that on tiktok they're like people people are just book collectors they're not actually book readers like i like collecting things i like collecting things i have i like ha having like cute little setups and like little stations and like making my shelves look a particular way so in the future like when i'm older like i picture myself having like, a cool library in whatever home i'm in with like all of these just like classical beautiful books like just a section of like stunning books that don't necessarily need to be read okay but we could just get nice things just to look at them we don't have to feel ashamed for doing that that was me in this pride and prejudice cover because like what i think these are like what swans I don't know and then it's just like the gold detailing like this is a type of hardcover that i can get into okay i could get into this type of hardcover like one that looks very vintage honestly i got pride and prejudice because like i've heard bits and bobs about the movie like if there is one of jane austen's books that i might be inclined to read in my lifetime it might probably be pride and prejudice at some point in my lifetime that's everything that's my book haul like i said i will be going on a book buying van until i finish five books because i also have got my physical tbr over there majority of those books on that shelf have not been read so we need to read them but i'm just excited even though i'm like this is so fantasy heavy but i'm like i'm just in my fantasy mood like i have a lot of romance books on this shelf so i think i've accumulated a good amount to where like if i'm ever in a mood for something specific like i have a lot of different genres and vibes to choose from like if i want a corny little romance i have it on my shelf if i want a space fantasy i have it on my shelf the book club is starting in february we're kicking it off in, in february i'm getting all the stuff uh together i didn't forget about that i didn't just bring it up and forget about it i just wanted to start it in february so i have time to like figure stuff out so book club coming in february i will be asking you guys stuff about that like for that coming up like we have to pick which book we want to read which is like it's exciting like our first book of book club anyways have a good one i'll see you thanks for watching